YouTube, this is Theo Beams from GTA Cryptos, where we learn everything about blockchain. So I have a question here in the community questions board, uh, and I thought I'd make a video just because this is kind of like a detailed question, but I am going to keep it as simple and as quick as possible just to give you guys an idea of the landscape of layer two scaling solutions. So as you can see, I'm wearing a scale shirt. I'm part of the launch team, the official launch team. It's just like a, a nice title that I'm pretty proud of, but I'm just going to talk to you guys a, a little bit about um, what a layer two is, just the basic concept. Then we're going to talk a bit about side chains. And then we're going to talk about scale and how that compares to the other um, uh, solutions that we mentioned. So the question is, yo, Theo Beams, I'm trying to learn more about layer two and wrapping my head around the differences, uh, the different types. Uh, I think that's ZK rollup and wondering if there's a feature slash function that's constant throughout the different types. Seems like it might be side chains, but also that's its own thing. Thanks, bro. First of all, what is a layer two, right? So really quick, if you understand uh, the main chain, like Ethereum, the main layer one blockchain to be like a record, Layer two is just a second record that lives on top. And um, that's really the basics there where it's the, it's the second layer that actually is faster and cheaper to use. So anytime that you have like a low economic um, situation where you're playing a game or you're just sending a few dollars, uh, something that's not too complicated and has to stay on the, the chain for a long, long period of time, uh, it's a good idea to use a layer two. You know, if but if you're doing say like a lending program or or uh, something like that's like Ave that's very uh, heavy and has billions of dollars on it, it, might be best to keep most of the assets on layer one, on the main chain Ethereum blockchain, right? Um, but transactions that are quick and easy, you want to do on the layer two. So, how do you do that? And how do you make it easier? Why can't you just do it on layer one? Well, first of all. Layer ones are, there's plenty of layer ones for, for, for that matter. Um, but for the layer one situation is you may not always have the uh, bandwidth or the, the, the space, or it might be uh, too expensive for you to use the, the layer one. And you might want an alternative that's just f basically free or, you know, has a very regulated cost where it doesn't go up and down. Layer ones can be kind of chaotic because they have a lot of economic activity. We're, we're talking global blockchains here, right? So a layer two solution might be more localized, might be more um, calm and, and uh, much more predictable where the where the fees can go and and uh, how busy it might be. So or also how composable it can be as well. So when we look at um, what a side chain is, I'm just going to read some of the definitions here just to make it easy. Um, and this will lead into um, kind of like what rollups are as well. So a side chains are blockchains that fully validate another blockchain as part of their consensus rules. Example, a side chain to Ethereum is a blockchain that validates the Ethereum chain. There are a number of ways side chain blocks can be produced, including proof of authority, a single block producer, or a federation or Nakamoto consensus with proof of work. So there's plenty of ways that you can validate the main layer one blockchain with another blockchain. You, you, uh, Dragon Chain does this, um, you know, and roll. I was about to mention rollups, but we'll talk about that later, right? So, or even a consensus protocol using proof of stake for civil resistance. The only way Oh, sorry, the two-way peg design of the side chain, i.e. Uh, the mechanism for locking tokens for use on the side chain. So just a note there is that you might have already understood this is that when you're using a side chain, you're actually sending tokens from the layer one to the layer two. OK, so uh, the mechanism for locking tokens to use on the side chain, then unlocking them back to the main chain is critical. 
a trust minimized way to uh, uh, sorry a trust minimized two-way peg is ideal but is not feasible with plain side chains so some of the metrics um, side chains can have the same security as the main chain by time stamping side chain block headers uh, hashes on the main chain so all that's saying there is just that you can you can take um, every block on the main chain and kind of uh, put it into your layer 2 consensus in their blocks just to validate the, every single block on the main chain at the same time. It's a way to say that. A trust minimized two-way peg is not possible with plain side chains since data withholding is not uniquely is not a uniquely attributable fault. A side chain that adds features to make the, its two-way peg trust minimize ends up becoming a plasma or a rollup. So just to break that down, what it's saying here is that a trust minimized two-way peg is not possible with uh, plain side chains. Uh, that's just because you're you're actually using um, you know just another blockchain. So so you're really just trusting those node operators on the second blockchain. Okay. Now the way that you make it trust minimized is that you kind of make the that blockchain a lot more trustworthy that's another way of saying that right so trust minimize trustworthy these words are, i mean i see them as the same thing so how do you make a side chain or a blockchain more trustworthy now there's plenty of ways to do that that's why they talk about plasma or a rollup but we're not going to talk about rollups or sorry plasma too much we'll talk a little bit about rollups and then i'll talk about scale so a rollup is just basically a way to take a bunch of transactions that happen on the side chain and they make it um, almost economically secure um, either instantly or with a time delay for to leave room for like a, a fraud proof to say that hey if um, someone was lying or someone did actually try to fraudulently send funds you have a window of time to, to, to take back your money. Now, that's how you trust minimize a, a layer two, right? So you either verify everything instantly uh, and securely, and that's like a ZK roller, or you do it with like a bit of a delay. Um, you let transactions go through quickly, and then you um, pretty much batch them all in one after like seven days, and then send it to the main chain. And that's like an optimistic rollup. Now they're just called rollups because you're taking, again, a bunch of transactions, and you're just fitting them either into one into one block basically just with a signature on the this layer two now how do you really trust minimize a, a blockchain like the best way and in my opinion the way scale has designed that their um, consensus mechanism and their their security model is probably the most genius that i've seen so far now we're just learning about blockchain there's a lot more to learn and I do encourage you to like and subscribe, and follow us, and uh, continue our journey along with us, right? Join the Discord whenever you'd like, and uh, or just ask me questions in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer. So, what is scale? How does scale work? Uh, the basic way that scale works is actually more like a sidechain than it is a rollup. Now, they use something called BLS rollups but it's more so just the technology than it is a rollup. I think that scale is much more so a side chain, but not just one side chain. It's a network of side chains. Now, how do they do this? They pretty much take a bunch of nodes. Now, thousands of nodes they have a capacity for, maybe even the, into the hundreds of thousands of nodes. And instead of taking all of those nodes and making them one side chain, they take all those nodes and make multiple side chains. Okay. And they basically optimize the uh, usage of those, those, um, those resources. So if you needed a lot of nodes to run your own blockchain, now remember, or I haven't said it yet, but now if you think about it, scale is pretty much taking blockchain technology and making it personal to you so like if you needed a blockchain for whatever reason you could rent one from scale okay 
and it's fully compatible with Ethereum in the sense that it's using Solidity uh, contract la uh, language and it's using the same tools that you can use to deploy Solidity contracts on the main chain. So Scale's done a really good job at connecting with um, the entire Ethereum um, enterprise community and the tooling community as well. Uh, so you have wallets, plenty of wallets that are um, integrating with them. And it's uh, very simplified where you can just send tokens from Ethereum to the main chain. Now, again, I'm going to go back to how Scale works, right? So they make it so that you could just rent a blockchain, an Ethereum in your pocket in a way, right? Where you could either have, you know, a small amount of resources and, and pay like a very small fee, or you could have the largest, fastest version of Ethereum that's, of course, faster than the main chain. And again, it's yours. So you're not sharing the resources with anyone else. The only thing that you're um, sharing is just some of the nodes, like the actual physical nodes that someone might be running for scale. They actually are supporting multiple blockchains at the same time. But because their power, their their resources are being optimized, they can handle all of the the, the traffic that's going through. Now, that's basically how scale works. Um, that's basically how layer twos work. If you have any more questions, guys, um, in the in the group or just in watching my passing, um, do send us a comment. Uh, let me know where you're still stuck up on, and I'll be happy to explain. Now, again, I'll just go over anything like here. Just layer twos really are just a way to do easier, cheaper, faster transactions. Now, inherently, they are a little bit less secure because the main the Ethereum blockchain, you can't replicate that security. But they are doing their best to become as trust minimized as possible. And I think, in my opinion, Scale is probably the best proponent for that. Uh, definitely because of their design, it's the much scale more scalable option because they are not using all of their nodes for the same blockchain. They have a, a huge ability to scale just because, I mean, think about the math, right? You, you, you don't have a, really a cap to how many nodes can join the network. You can lower the cost to, to run a node. So that's like right now it's maybe two million scale you need to run a node. They could always lower that number um, if the price of scale goes up and uh, or also if the you know, the headroom for the amount of tokens available on the market is um, way down. So they have plenty of uh, metrics that they can tweak and change to, to adapt. Um, and I'm really excited to build on this project. So do look forward to what we have coming forth with um, our launches. I'm not gonna talk too much about it just cause it's still in the in plans and uh, you know, still on the drawing board. So if you have any ideas, I'd be really happy to hear what your ideas are. Um, and uh, check us out more in the future. And uh, check out what Scale's doing. If you have more questions, hit them in, uh, hit them in the comments and uh, we'll be happy to answer. You have a good day. Bye.